okay so let's start with the uh, first chapter first unit that is the uh, gst in india and introduction uh, this is a basic chapter which is going to give an overview of you know how gst was introduced then uh, what are the general terms that we are going to use throughout the uh, entire gst law and many other small small small, small things uh, you know uh, things differentiating gst with the old uh, indirect taxes and all those things okay so all the basic things are going to be covered in this particular chapter let's start with it now as you can see here on the screen the name of the chapter is given gst in india and introduction uh let let's start from the very very basics yes as you already know when we talk about taxation okay when we talk about taxation uh, we have got mainly broadly two types one is your direct tax and the other one is your indirect taxation right these are the two types of uh, taxation that you have in direct taxes you have got your income tax as you already know widely used law right and when we talk about indirect tax then one of the most important law which has come into picture now right or i can say from the year 2017 that is your gst okay gst stands for goods and service tax right now uh, ma'am what was there before 2017 like before you just now mentioned that gst came into picture from 2017 what was there before that so yes before gst we had various laws uh, some of them we still have it now we had your um, VAT, value added tax, that was one of the taxes that you had. Then we had our service tax law that was there. And then because of some reasons which we are going to discuss now, uh, because of that the old indirect tax laws were kind of removed or we can say kind of consolidated and now this new law that is goods and service tax or GST law has come into picture. Okay. Now, uh, as you already know, as you already know, or if you don't know, then let's discuss it in short. Why income tax is called as a direct tax? Because whatever you earn, okay, whatever I earn from that, I pay a portion of it called as tax. So directly, if I'm earning something, for example, if I'm earning 100 rupees, from that directly I'm paying 30 rupees. Okay, example, 30 rupees gone. So, whatever income I earn directly, I paid a tax on it. Okay, but that is not the case with indirect taxes. What happens with indirect taxes? It's not paid on what you are earning. Okay, let's say we are a consumer. Okay, we are a normal consumer. We go and purchase, uh, let's say, a mobile phone. Okay, we go and purchase a mobile phone. Is it our income? No, it is not an income. We are purchasing an asset for us or we are purchasing a thing for us okay but when you go and purchase it they say that the price is for example the price is 50,000 rupees inclusive of GST means can we say ultimately we are going to pay him 50,000 rupees and this 50,000 rupees also includes GST so this indirectly we are paying a tax here but this tax is not levied on the income right when we are purchasing at that time we are paying at that time we are paying the taxes Okay, so this tax which we are paying indirectly uh, in the form of purchases, such a tax will be called as indirect taxes. Are you clear with this? Okay, before this GST, you had VAT that was applicable. Whenever we used to take any services at that time, service tax was applicable. So earlier you had your VAT, now you have VAT or service tax and now you have got your GST. I hope I am very, very clear till here. Yes, this was... Uh, Ekdom basic, like very, very uh, basic thing uh, that was there. Now, let's go ahead and let's try to understand the further things. Okay. Uh, now, what happened at that point of time? Just try to understand your everyone. Uh, ultimately, I should tell you effective date, okay, with effect from GST came into picture from 1st July 2017. Okay, 1st July 2017, it came into picture. Does that mean that? You know, the law was thought upon on the same day and it got implemented on the same day. Definitely, no, right? Because it takes years and years of effort, thinking, implementation, taking of advices from various stakeholders and all that. So, the work was going on since many years, but ultimately it became applicable from 1st July 2017. 
okay now here they say that we all now we know that gst is an indirect tax right now first of all full form of gst is goods and service tax means whenever there is any purchase or sale of goods that is going to involve gst right and whenever there is any services also involved example i am giving you coaching services i am providing you lectures okay i am giving you coaching services so in that case also gst will be applicable because it is a tax not only on goods it is a tax on goods as well as sir very clear till you okay now they say that gst is a destination okay gst is a destination based consumption tax okay destination based consumption tax okay first of all uh, consumption tax means what okay first of all consumption tax means the person who is ultimately consuming the goods okay i will give them a numerical example also as of now just try to understand it theoretically okay the person who is ultimately going to consume the goods that person is ultimately going to bear the burden of tax okay example example okay uh, you must have heard about uh, uh, let's say let's say let's say let's say i let's say the exam, same example of mobile phone okay in case of mobile phone let's say there is a company which manufactures the mobile phone okay after manufacturing it gives to the to another person to another person to sell it to the general public now let's say that person is a wholesaler okay or uh, wholesaler does not fit in the mobile example but normally you know the chain okay one is the manufacturer then you have got the wholesaler then you have got the retailer and then you have got the consumer this is how it works okay so when the manufacturer is giving it to the wholesaler okay is the wholesaler the final consumer answer is no because final consumer are us we are the final consumer of that right then after that uh, the wholesaler is going to give it to the retailer retailer is going to give it to the consumer who is the ultimate consumer here can i say the last person is not going to sell it further and the person is going to finally use it right that person is ultimately going to bear the gst okay so that that is the meaning of the term called as consumption tax okay now what do you mean by destination based consumption tax okay now one thing one thing we already know is can we say ultimately whatever tax we pay okay whatever tax we pay it goes to the government right if i talk about uh, uh, about income tax okay can you tell me income tax goes to the central government or income tax goes to the state government definitely income tax is a central tax so it goes to the central government okay similarly when we talk about gst okay when we talk about gst so they say that in gst the revenue should go to whom so they say that they say that revenue will be going to both of them both of them means it will be going to the central government also and some part of it should go to state government also ma'am why so like cent it is also a central law no? so even that should go to the central government so they say that they say that earlier when we had vat okay vat was a state matter means maharashtra uh, state if i talk about maharashtra state had its vat laws similarly gujarat state had its vat laws and so on okay so it was a state matter service tax was a central matter so at that time also the revenue was kind of shared between the central government and the respective state governments so they say that, they, they said that okay if suppose entire gst goes to the central government then this will be bad for the state government from where will the state government get the revenue then okay so they said that okay gst is also going to be divided amongst both central government as well as state government okay now if i say central government then obviously we know that there is only one central government right union union government Achha, but when i talk about state government can we say we have multiple states so there will be multiple state governments right okay so they say that it is the some part of gst okay some part of this tax is going to go to such state government where the goods are ultimately consumed and what do you mean by this what do you mean by this okay let's say let's say some goods are being sold from maharashtra to gujarat okay and the goods are being consumed in gujarat 
can you tell me which is what is the final destination of these goods final destination is gujarat final destination means where the goods are going to be ultimately consumed so can i say if the goods are going to be consumed in gujarat so they say that this is the state this is the state to whom some portion some portion of gst tax should go okay maharashtra will say that i have done the sale so we should get the revenue but gst law was made on this condition only that gst is going to be a destination based consumption tax means some portion of the tax will go to the central government that is okay balance portion of the tax will go to such state government such state government where the goods are ultimately consumed are you clear with this yes earlier okay along with vat we used to have cst also central sales tax that was to totally opposite of gst it you it it had the concept of origin based taxation origin based means from where the sale started that state government will get the revenue and this is totally ulta okay here it is not origin based tax here it is destiny uh, consumption based tax are you clear with this yes okay fine now let's go to the history of gst okay let's let's try let's understand the history of gst okay so i'll just show it to you from the notes itself because it is going to be the same thing acha yes and another thing this we already know 1st july 2017 it is a destination based consumption tax so um, whenever i ask you gst is which type of tax so you should be able to tell me that ma'am it is a destination based destination based consumption tax means means wherever the goods are going to be consumed finally that state government will get its share yes and yes gst is applicable to whole of india if your doubt is ma'am what about jammu kashmir so let me tell you gst is applicable even to the state of jammu and kashmir yes okay now let's get into the details of the same everyone let's try it okay now see can you see something called as constitutional amendment yes now uh what they did was your uh, whenever they want to bring any particular law okay whenever they wanted to when, when whenever they are bringing any particular law uh for that for that initially a bill is passed okay initially a bill is passed then the bill gets converted into the act i don't know if you have heard about budget income tax budget have you heard about it yes now for income tax budget also if you know there is something called as finance bill okay there is something called as finance bill that is passed and after that first that is introduced then that is passed and only after that it becomes a finance act okay and then we can say that yes whatever was discussed in the budget etc that thing was implemented so for this also for this also first of all they thought that we should do a constitutional amendment okay means they had to do amendments in the constitution india's constitution okay ma'am why was there a need why was there a need to make a constitutional amendment they could have passed a gst bill and then the gst bill could have been converted into the gst and we could have done it that way so why what was the need to do a constitutional amendment so basically what they thought was now gst is a tax on goods as well as services yes so they wanted to give power okay they had thought that let's give power to both central government as well as state government to collect taxes just now i told you gst goes to whom goods and service tax this tax goes to whom some portion of it goes to the central government whereas some portion of it goes to the state government this is what so can we say central government is also collecting the gst and even state government is collecting the gst okay now earlier what used to happen was vat was collected by the states service tax was collected by the central means it it was like one tax was collected by one type of government only but now what is happening is one type of tax is being collected by two governments so because they wanted to give this power to central government as well as state government because of this they thought that let's do a constitutional amendment okay and doing a constitutional amendment is a big thing huh? 
not every law requires constitutional amendment but but this was such a thing where we required a constitutional amendment okay so because of this because of the constitutional amendment what happened because of this now both central government central government cg central government as well as state government okay both of them have the powers to collect gst and this was possible only because this was possible only because that constitutional amendment was Okay, now ma'am, to do constitutional amendment, can we say we'll have to pass a constitution amendment bill? Answer is definitely yes. We will have to pass a constitutional constitution amendment bill. Can you see here on the board, everyone? Yes, uh, I'll zoom a little. Too big. One second. Hmm. Can you see now, everyone? Yes. Okay. Now let's try and understand this. Uh, now this Constitution Bill. Okay, as you can see here, this Constitution One Twenty Second Amendment Bill, Two Thousand Fourteen, was introduced on GST. First, we will introduce the bill. This was introduced on Nineteenth December Two Thousand and Fourteen. Yes. Then after that, since the bill was introduced, then it has to be uh, passed by both the houses of parliament. That is your Lok Sabha as well as your Rajya Sabha. Lok Sabha passed it on sixth May two thousand and fifteen, and Rajya Sabha passed it on third August two thousand and sixteen. So the bill was proposed. After that, it was passed in both the houses of parliament. Okay, and then uh, when uh, after getting the majority, okay, after getting the majority. and after the states more than 50% of the states approved it after that the president the then president of india also gave the assent that okay we are absolutely okay with this and uh, that assent was received on 8th september 2016 and once the bill is approved by both the houses of parliament as well as president then after that it becomes a constitution amendment act 2016 means means what happened what happened was finally now both of them central government as well as state government both of them had got the powers to levy the gst very clear with this yes okay then after this see what happened now this was a constitutional amendment now the respective laws are required to be by way of constitutional amendment both of them just got the powers to collect taxes or to levy taxes okay but now what about gst let's try to understand that yes i hope you are very very clear till here yes so uh, kya hua yahan tak theek hai kya hua yahan tak gst unko lana tha gst lane mein bhi they wanted to give the powers to both dono ko powers dene the central government ko bhi powers dene the state government ko bhi powers dene the ki humko bhi tax collect karne ka dono ko tax collect karne ka tha to unhone bola iske liye to constitution amendment karna padega अगर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अमेंडमेंट करने का है तो उसके लिए क्या करना पड़ेगा उसके लिए कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन पहले बिल पास प्रपोज करना पड़ेगा उसके ऊपर लोकसभा राज्यसभा का अप्रूवल आएगा एंड फिर ही उसके बाद में प्रेसिडेंट का एसन मिलने के बाद में वो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अमेंडमेंट हो सकता है ठीक है ये सब तो हो गया नाउ लेट्स गो अहेड नाउ देन नाउ वी नो दैट इफ सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट इज गोइंग टू लेवी द टैक्स तो सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट विल हैव टू मेक सम लॉ जीएसटी लॉ okay same way the respective states all the states because now they had got the power to levy gst now even they will have to frame the gst legislation yes so now two types of laws mainly two types of laws will be framed one is your central law and the other one is going to be your state law right these two types of laws are going to be framed now just try to understand everyone here now first we are talking about the central law on 27th march 2017 okay now see the speed up huh? on 27th march 2017 central central gst legislations were introduced in the lok sabha okay it was done in the lok sabha then after that lok sabha passed the bills on 27th march it was laid it was introduced 29th march so it was passed okay within a time span of 2 days okay within the next few days the president assent was also received then after that on 30th june on 30th june all states and union territories had passed their respective sgst state gst and ut union territory gst acts except jammu and kashmir so what happened what happened 
in march and april the central gst legislations were approved okay centrally things were done then by the time we reached june by 30th till 30th of june obviously because there will be various dates when respective states would have adopted the gst provision but a cut off date by 30 june 2017 every state every state of india and every union territory of india had made their gst legislations and they were ready to levy the gst okay except one state that is jammu and kashmir jammu kashmir said that we need time okay fine no problem okay since everything was done till 30 june 2017 right from the next day 1st july 2017 right from this day the historic indirect tax reform because this is definitely a reform all the old kind of laws those were scrapped right uh, to maximum extent and this new law was being brought into the picture yes and this was this historic tax reform was done and gst was introduced in india which state had still not agreed for it that was jammu and kashmir but then also then it said um, that uh, okay fine we will also adopt the same and within a week on 8th july 2017 on 8th july 2017 jammu kashmir also adopted the same and it said that okay i am also with the country now because it is a part of our country and now that's why it was said about uh, that's why it was said about that gst is applicable to whole of india and at that time itself i had clarified that it is applicable to whole of india including the state of jammu and kashmir are you clear with this yes so what happened till now what happened till now first year constitution amendment was done yes after that the central gst legislations were formed okay that was approved after that respective states made its own legislations and by 1st july 2017 we were all ready and so on that particular date this entire gst was introduced and uh, jammu and kashmir also it was applicable but with effect from 8th july 2017 very very clear with this yes and then there is this date chart given this is just for reference please don't by heart this okay this is just by, just for the purpose of reference just remember two dates here normally gst was <clears throat> launched on 1st july 2017 and on 8th july on 8th july 2017 it was uh, adopted by jammu kashmir also so gst became applicable to the state of jammu and kashmir uh, from or we can say union territory jammu and kashmir from 8th july 2017 very clear with this yes okay okay now uh, since all these things started from 1st july 2017 let's try to understand what all things or what all new laws or which all new acts came into picture after that okay let's try to understand that okay everyone here just pay attention very very simple very very uh, basic things once uh, all these things are done and then we can go to uh, you know the calculations i'll show you the calculations and all those things okay now once this gst thing was done okay once this was made applicable after that now we need laws right we need acts which will contain all the provisions all the necessary provisions so that the users of the law as well as the government can implement will they can start implementing it okay so now because of that four laws came into picture okay i am writing it here everyone here on the board four laws came into picture because of that first one was your cgst act 2017 can you tell me the full form of cgst act central goods and service tax act 2017 this came into picture then there was another law which came into picture called as igst act 2017 i your stands for integrated okay integrated goods and service tax act 2017 then the third law which came into picture was utgst act 2017 ut your stands for union territory goods and service tax act 2017 and last one was gst a uh, compensation okay gst compensation cess act 2017 i'll tell you the purpose of this later as of now just understand the name 
okay gst compensation cess act 2017 these four laws came into force as soon as the gst was implemented okay apart from there there were some temporary laws like the cgst amendment act 2000 i'll just show it to you here on the board also yes i'll just show it to you everyone here uh yes here it is one second i'll just scroll down yes this thing is actually already written in your book also uh, but still you can refer it from the board see cgst act came into picture igst act came into picture utgst act came into picture and gst compensation act 2017 this also came into picture these were the four major laws which came into picture and apart from that there is the cgst amendment act 2018 igst amendment act 2018 and then the respective budgets finance acts and so on okay these were the laws from which we took information for the gst implementation okay now ma'am central gst is okay union territory gst is okay maybe that will be used by the union territories igst integrated gst we don't know what is it about compensation says looks like some some uh, some law which is going to compensate to someone okay ma'am what about state so yes definitely states will also pass their respective gst acts or the laws that we can say so just see here on the board the states and union territories okay now listen some important things coming up here state is one thing and union territories with their own legislatures now what they have done is we know that the revenue of gst is going to be shared as i had written here revenue of gst is going to be shared by the central government and by the state government okay can we say it will be shared by the state government or it will be shared by the union territory right say let's say for example if i talk about andaman and nicobar islands okay so uh, it is not a, we, we do not call it as a state we call it as a union territory so uh, union territory so either it can be a state or it can be a union territory so what they did was they said that okay states will make their own gst legislations okay example example maharashtra okay maharashtra will make its own gst legislation same way union territories okay let's give two option to the union territories okay first option given to the union territory is union territory if you want to make your own legislation okay if you want to make your own legislation or with their own legislatures okay then such union territories then such union territories will be treated at par with states because they have made their own suppose let's talk about maharashtra maharashtra has made its own gst laws okay acha now if there is a particular union territory let's say delhi delhi says that yes i am a union territory but i will make my own laws so we will consider even though it is a union territory then too we will consider it at par with a state and what are we going to call that state as you are a union territory with your own legislation did you understand what did i say you are you are a union territory with your own legislation okay now there will be some small union territories or there will be some other union territories which do not have their own legislation okay okay means which which is not framed which is not framed legislation for itself gst legislation for itself for them for them which law will be applicable for them ut gst is going to be applicable union territory gst act will be applicable okay so 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 coming back here see here states and union territories with their own legislatures that is delhi puducherry and jammu kashmir okay delhi puducherry and jammu kashmir these three said that even though we are union territories we will prepare our own legislation so we said okay if you are preparing your own legislation then utgst will not be applicable sgst will be applicable they said yes okay fine we were happy with it and for that respective sgst act was made applicable central was cgst then we had one igst then we had one utgst now can you tell me utgst will be used for whom can we see utgst will be used by rest of the union territories which have not prepared their own legislation ma'am can you give example of other such union territories yes 
Union territories means the territory of Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Lakshwadip, Dadra and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu. They have used both of them together. So, even you are supposed to use both of them together. Okay. Ladakh, Chandigarh and any other territory which will be notified later on. These five, okay, we can call it as these five, these five are such union territories which do not have their own legislation. Okay, which do not have their own legislation. So, which law are they going to follow? They are going to follow the UTGST. Are you clear with this? Okay. Fine. Aja ma'am, how do we remember these names? Delhi, Puducherry and Jammu Kashmir, this you have to remember. No option in that. Other union territories, maybe you can remember it in this way. The, Paul and other. Okay. Or you can alternatively remember it as call D and others. Okay. Ma'am, what does this stands for? C. Chandigarh. A. Andaman and Nicobar. Lakshwadeep. Ladakh. Dadra and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu and any other territory. Call D and others. Okay. By this way, you can uh, remember it. Very clear with this. Okay. So, these union territories, these union territories are going to follow the UTGST uh, Act because they do not have their own legislation. The other three union territories that is Delhi, Puducherry and Jammu Kashmir, they said that we will make our own legislations. Therefore, they will make their own legislation and hence they will not be falling under UTGST Act. They will be going under SGST. Yes, can we go ahead everyone? Yes, okay. All these things are written in your notes also. Let's move ahead now. So, to sum up, to sum up, let's write it in this way, everyone. I'm just concluding it. Yaha pe dhyan do. Pay attention here, everyone. Just pay attention here. Uh, when we talk about states then we can say 29 states yes 29 states or let me just write it as states here because that will include your delhi jammu and kashmir also if i write 29 so we can say states will normally follow sgst act right then three union territories which three delhi Puddu, Cheri and Jammu and Kashmir. Okay. They have made their own legislation. Therefore, SGST Act will only be applicable. Okay. And then six others, six union territories, others. Okay. For them, for them, that is uh, Chandigarh. Then, 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 Paul, see, na, Andaman and Nicobar, uh, Ladakh. Lakshwadeep and uh, Dadra and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu and any other territory. These are going to follow the UTGST. Are you clear till you everyone? Yes, understandable. Okay. Okay, so then let's go ahead. So this was the basic history tree of the GST that on uh, like which all dates, which all years the things were introduced. It was passed in the parliament that is both the houses of parliament and um, from which date it became effective and which laws will be applicable to whom. This is all that we have studied. Now let's get into the concept of GST. Okay, let's try to understand the concept of GST. Everyone with me. Okay. Uh, now, we know that GST is such a law, just like I had given you an example, GST is such a law which is applicable right from the stage 1. Okay, it is going to be applicable right from manufacturers and it will ultimately go on till the consumer. Okay, manufacturer to wholesaler to retailer to consumer or to any other person who is there in between. 
okay it is an entire chain which starts at the level of manufacturer and it goes up to consumer and one thing that we had studied was it is going to be ultimately borne by the consumer remember the statement destination based consumption tax ultimately it is going to be borne by the consumer are you clear till here okay now ma'am uh, can you please explain how how it is borne by the consumer let's try to understand now everyone just pay attention i am taking a mathematical example okay now let's take the example of a manufacturer okay manufacturer is making something his cost is equal to 100 rupees okay his cost is 100 rupees and then he is going to sell this okay let's say he is adding some profit definitely he is going to add some profit okay he is adding a profit of I'll take this for simplicity. I'll take this as 90. He is adding a profit of 10. His selling price, okay, his selling price is equal to 100. Are you clear till here? Yes. Now listen. He is going to sell it at 100. While selling it at 100, he will have to charge GST. Because GST is applicable at the time of supply, at the time of sale. Okay. For simplicity, let's assume GST percentage as 18%. Okay. Which is the by default rate that we always select. Okay. Now, let's go ahead. 18%, 100, 118 is, is his final selling price, including taxes. Okay. Now, can we say this manufacturer, this manufacturer has sold the goods to the other person for 118 and he has collected a GST of 18 rupees. Can we say this 18, this 18 rupees is going to go to the government? Okay, so he has paid 18 rupees to the government, but has this manufacturer paid it from his pocket? No, he has collected from the other person and he has paid it. Okay, now let's say, let's say this comes in the hands of wholesaler. Okay, this comes in the hands of the wholesaler. Now, can we say, can we say wholesaler has got it for wholesaler, for wholesaler, he has got it at a price of 100 rupees. Yes, he has got it at a price of 100 rupees. He adds some profit to it. Okay, he adds some profit. See, wholesaler had paid. Wholesaler had paid total 118. Yes, but out of that 18 rupees was the GST. So, we will say that cost for him. Whatever is the selling price for him, that becomes the cost for the wholesaler. Okay, now let's say he adds a profit of 10 rupees here. And then he finally decides to sell it for 110. On this, on this 110, can we say whenever he is going to sell it further, on that he will charge GST at the rate of 18%. Yes, now 18% on this comes to 19.8. Are you clear till here? Yes, so now final selling price for him is equal to 129.86. Now, can we say this wholesaler is required to pay some tax to the government? Yes. Now, how much has he collected from the other person? He has collected 19.80 on the same goods, huh? on the same goods on which the manufacturer had collected 18 rupees and now he has also collected 19.8. So, will we give entire 19.8 to the government? Answer is no. Can we say 19.8 is payable to the government? From that, we have already paid 18 years. Yes. So, can we say we are taking some benefit of the tax paid earlier? Whatever tax we had paid earlier. So, here finally to the government. Here finally to the government, we are going to pay the difference of 1.80. Ma'am, how did you get this difference of 1.80? 19.8 minus already paid to the government is equal to 18. Are you clear with this? Yes. So, can we say ultimately total 19.8 has reached the government? Yes. So, this was the tax payable and this 18, we took the credit of this 18, we took the input tax credit of this 18 because remember wholesaler had earl earlier paid 18 rupees. 
of that 18 we have now got the benefit yes now let's say now let's say this goes in the hands of a retailer wholesaler is going to sell it to the retailer now can you tell me what will be the cost for the retailer the same price 110 yes now let's say let's say he adds he adds 40 rupees of profit in it and uh, he is he has decided to sell it at 150 okay now what is going to be the tax on this 150 let's say the 18 percent on this comes to 27 so can we say this becomes 177 27 is payable to the government now can you tell me how much credit are we going to take how much amount has been paid to the government till now 18 and 1.8 that is 19.8 has been paid to the government so here here to the government how much amount are we going to pay now we are going to pay 27 minus 18 minus 1.8 that comes to 7.2 yes and now can we say retailer can we say now retailer is going to sell it to the ultimate consumer yes at what price at what price is he going to sell it to the consumer okay now let's say listen manufacturer manufacturer has sold it to the wholesaler at this price wholesaler has sold it to the retailer okay already sale is done wholesaler has sold it to the retailer at 129.8 and retailer has already sold it to the consumer at what price has he sold to the consumer he has sold he has sold it at 177 okay now listen listen can we say the chain is going to end here because consumer is not going to sell it for them so what is the final cost for the consumer what is the final cost for the consumer final cost for the consumer is equal to a 177 consumer must have paid 177 for these goods are you clear with this everyone yes are you understanding this everyone okay so the chain breaks here now listen i'll just show you one small calculation just try to understand okay everyone just try to understand can you tell me how much is the final taxes paid to the government at first level we paid 80 right at second level we paid 1.80 and at third level at third level we paid 7.2 right so now can we say ultimately we have paid this 27 rupees to the government can you see this this 27 rupees actually the value of goods was 150 which included a tax of 27 which went in the hands of consumer and therefore the selling price was 177 so consumer has paid 177 out of that 27 was paid to the government right so from whom have we recovered this 27 this 27 has been recovered ultimately from the consumer are you clear with this how this was arrived yes so always remember the final burden the final burden is always going to be on the consumer yes now see everyone here concept of gst just try to understand so gst as we already know it is a tax which is levied on manufacture sale and consumption of goods and services continuous chain of tax credits continuous chain of tax credits did you understand that at every level at every level the other person like your wholesaler was taking the credit of the tax which was paid by the manufacturer that was paid by him remember instead of paying 19.8 we paid only 1.8 to the government because we took the credit of 80 are you clear with this so there is going to be a continuous chain of tax credit and this chain will be till when this chain will be till the level of consumer okay because at the final level consumer is not going to sell it to anyone else he is going to self-use it so the chain is going to break and final burden final burden will be on the consumer and there is no cascading effect of taxes there is no overlapping effect of taxes did you see everyone here i did not take i did not take 118 as the cost i took 100 as the cost because your tax is not considered as a cost because for manufacturer wholesaler retail, retailer tax is never the cost it's not we are are we are we calculating gst on taxes also no no 
we calculated here also when we calculated we calculated gst on the amount which does not include any gst so there is no taxes on taxes there is no cascading effect are you clear with this yes okay those same things are return okay and here also they have given one example similar numerical example which we have taken similar example with different figures they have given yes can we proceed ahead now yes okay now what was the need like why gst was introduced ma'am you said earlier we had vat earlier we had service tax they must have also thought about something na like while introducing vat and service tax also they were they must be sure that okay this is also a reform uh but still why did they introduce this gst because definitely definitely because there were some deficiencies in the old system okay there were some deficiencies in the old system let's try to highlight okay let's try to highlight what were the deficiencies in the existing system because of which we had to introduce this gst yes so now just try to understand everyone uh, i'll give you few examples okay tell me tell me whether it is a problem or it is not a problem Okay. Now, what used to happen? What used to happen earlier was first point, first problem. When we talk about restaurant, okay, when we talk about hotel, they say that goods is also involved and service is also involved. Am I right? Yes, goods means food is also involved and they serve it to your uh, table and all that. For that, labor charges, service charges also involved. Okay, so what used to happen? What used to happen in case of restaurant? vat was also applicable because vat was applicable on goods and even service tax was applicable because service tax is a tax on services both was applicable okay example 5% vat is also applicable and let's say for example 12% service tax is also applicable can we say we are paying both the taxes vat as well as service tax on a single thing yes so to because double taxation was happening so they said that year vat and service tax is a problem okay double taxation was happening same thing happened in case of software also okay whenever we purchase any paid software they say that it is goods also plus they are providing you the services of installation and all that also so vat and service tax both was applicable so they said that this leads to double taxation okay that this was one of the problem so the problem here is of double taxation am i clear with this yes okay then the next one next problem second problem was uh, have you heard about excise duty yes what used to happen was whenever i am manufacturing any goods let's say whenever i am manufacturing any goods let's say my cost of manufacture is equal to 100 rupees okay and let's say excise is applicable on me excise is equal to let's say 10 rupees okay my cost after excise duty becomes 110 now they said that gst is applicable on 110 and not on 100 can you identify what is the problem gst is also a tax excise is also a tax they said gst will be applicable let's say at the rate of 18% on 110 can we say we are levying tax on tax also is this correct or is this incorrect so they said that this is incorrect tax should not be levied on tax if you want to levy gst no problem levy it on 100 but don't levy it on 110 so they said that this is also a problem so let's remove some portion of excise duty yes this was the second problem in the existing system acha then they said that then they said that did we acha can you tell me did we get the credit of gst did we get the credit of gst yes we got the credit of gst at every level okay but credit of excise duty was not available okay what is the problem if there is no credit of excise duty available then can we say my burden will increase my cost will increase now i cannot say that my cost is 100 now i will have, if if this is gone if i have paid 10 rupees excise to the government and government is not going to give me any benefit for that can we say it is it has become my cost 
so 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 since excise was not allowed to be set off okay amount of excise was not allowed to be set off then in such case such case it becomes a burden right that was the third problem so we can aja excise credit was called as ten vat okay excise credit was called as ten vat so they said that ten vat credit was not available then that credit was not available so that led to increase in cost because of that cost of the goods increased okay acha apart from that in the old laws we had many multiple taxes example luxury tax example entertainment tax there were many such taxes which were levied additionally okay there were many such taxes which were levied additionally so now all those all those have been removed okay all those have been removed and all those have been put into gst okay so can we say ultimately consumer is going to bear less burden okay then 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 remember earlier i had told you vat was a state matter yes service tax was a central matter right so central government said that i was i am not allowed to levy vat i can just levy service tax power power was not there for vat the power was not there with the central government the power was there only with the state governments so they said that the, the, both the taxes both the taxes are not integrated now what did we study did we make a constitution amendment for that yes now both the government central as well as state both can levy gst but earlier this was not the thing okay same problem can we say same problem will be there with the state also state was not allowed to collect taxes on services so can we say earlier earlier what used to happen was if it was goods power was there only with the state if it is services power was there only with the center so both of them were angry center wanted goods also and state wanted services tax also so they said that okay for this we will have to make a constitution amendment did you understand this yes acha next problem next problem remember i had mentioned about a tax called as cst your cst stands for central state tax okay this was also one of the taxes which was levied and this was this uh, uh, of this cst also there was no credit available okay there was no credit available can we say if there was no credit available means even that was leading to addition in my cost because of that also my cost increased so this was a total distortion right and this was a total ulta tax it was origin based tax what did we study now for gst it is a destination based tax and it is not an origin based tax so gst benefit was going to which state the state from which the sale started now gst goes to which state gst goes to the state where the goods are finally consumed very clear till here okay so these were the problems these were the problems that we were facing under the old laws and because of which there arose the need okay there was the need that we should uh, scrap the old laws and we should bring the new one very clear till you everyone okay then uh, as now we have understood that what all problems were there under the old laws because of which we thought of introducing this historic tax reform and bringing this historic tax reform and we introduced gst okay gst became applicable from 1st july 2017 jammu kashmir 8th july 2017 everyone uh, adopted it okay because of that cgst act sgst act ig gst act gst compensation act all these laws came into picture okay union territories bifurcation we have already studied now let's get into the framework like what all things will be there a small small basic concepts that are applicable under gst let's try to understand the same okay in your notes everyone in your notes these are the these are the deficiencies that we have just discussed let's try to understand further everyone
Okay, in your textbook, come to the framework of GST as introduced in India. Let's understand this. Okay, first I'll make you explain and then we can do it from the textbook. Everyone here. Okay, first thing that they have mentioned there is, I'll just give the heading also so that later when you refer the notes, these class notes also, you should be able to understand. Okay, framework of GST. Now, just try to understand. First of all, they say that this goes on dual GST model. Okay, dual GST model. What do you mean by dual GST model? Remember the reason for doing the constitutional amendment? Because both of them, central government as well as state government, both of them wanted the powers to introduce GST. So now India has adopted that dual policy method or dual concept method or dual GST model method where concurrently, simultaneously, both state government as well as central government will impose the GST. Okay. Uh, and that to on both goods as well as services. Okay. Next one. Ne this was one concept. Okay. Now, let's try to understand about some. Uh, re remember the name of the acts. CGST was there. SGST was there. Okay. IGST was there. And UTGST was there. Right. These were the laws that we had studied. Now, these are also the name of taxes. Okay, these are also the name of taxes, central GST, state GST, integrated GST, union territory GST. These are also the name of taxes. That is, this will be levied. Example, excise, excise duty is also the name of the tax. VAT, VAT is also the name of the tax. Service tax is also the name of the tax. Okay, so ma'am, so ma'am, who will levy what? So, as you should be already knowing, can you guess and can you tell me, CGST will be levied by whom? Okay, CGST will be levied by the central government and it will go to the central government only. Okay, it will go in the pocket of central government. Okay, SGST will be levied by whom? SGST will be levied by state governments. And can you tell me which union territory will levy this SGST? Union territory with their own legislature. Okay, union territory with their own legislature. Then can you tell me who will levy UTGST? UTGST will be levied by those union territories who do not have their own legislature. Very clear with this? Still here everything is clear? Okay. Now, what about integrated GST? Integrated GST, for the timing, just remember that this will be levied and collected by the central government only, just like CGST. But then, this will be shared. Okay. Later on, this will be shared by the central government as well as the state. Okay, so IGST is one thing which will ultimately go, it will be just like this only, it will ultimately go to the center and the state. Very, very clear with this, everyone? Yes? Okay. So ma'am, like how does this happen? Just try to understand everyone, how does this happen? Okay, I'll just give you some simple example. Now, they say that there are two types of supplies mainly, okay, or two types of sale. One is interstate and the other one is intrastate. Okay, one is interstate and the other one is intrastate. Okay, interstate means between two different states. Let's say there is a sale happening from Maharashtra to Gujarat. Two different states are involved, right? At this point of time, IGST is levied. Okay, at this time, IGST is levied. Let's say IGST is applicable at the rate of 18%. So now, can you tell me, applying the previous page, if this IGST is levied at the rate of 18%, this IGST will be levied and collected by whom? This will be levied and collected by the central government and later it will be shared between the central government as well as the state government. Are you clear with this? Can you apply a little and can you tell me which state government will get the revenue? Maharashtra government or the Gujarat government? Definitely the Gujarat government because of the statement called as destination based consumption tax. Yes? Okay. So, IGST at the rate of 18%. 18% is an example. Huh? There are different rates of GST. It is 5% also. It is 12% also. It is 18% also. It is 28% also. 
we have just taken a normal example of 18%. So, this 18% will be later on shared between the center as well as the state. Okay. Now, in case of intrastate, okay, in case of intrastate, which taxes will be levied? In case of intrastate, let's say sale is from Maharashtra to Maharashtra only. Example, uh, sale is from Mumbai to Pune. Both are in Maharashtra only. At this point of time, CGST and SGST is levied. Okay, CGST and SGST is levied. So, ma'am, do you mean 18% and 18% will be levied? Answer is no. CGST will be levied at 9%, SGST will be levied at 9%, total will be same only always. Okay, total will be same only. Yes, okay, now listen, this CGST 9% will go to whom? This is collected by the center. Okay, this SGST 9% will go to whom? To the Maharashtra account. Are you clear with this? So, did you understand when IGST is applicable? Yes, whenever it is interstate at that time IGST is applicable but when it is within the state then CGST and SGST. Yeah. Clear till here? Yes. Now let's try to understand let's try to understand when will UTGST be applicable? Can you tell me? First of all UTGST was applicable for what? UTGST was applicable to those union territories which do not have their own legislature. Right? Example. Example. Uh, Daman and Diu Daman and Diu making sale in Daman and Diu within only so which taxes will be applicable CGST and do they have their state legislature no so can we say UTGST will be applicable here? are you clear with this ok Achha, one more example Delhi to Delhi. Can you give the answer? Delhi to Delhi. Delhi was a union territory. Delhi is a union territory, but is it having its own state legislature? Answer is yes, it is having its own state legislature. Yes. So, that was treated at par with state only. So, which, which uh, taxes will be applicable? CGST and SGST. SGST. UT will come into picture only if it is that kind of a union territory which does not have its own legislature. Are you clear with this? Yes. Can I give you a few more examples? Will you try here everyone? Can I give you a few examples? Will you try? Yes. I am writing it here on the board. Everyone here. Okay. First example. Maharashtra to Gujarat. Second example. Second example here is Madhya Pradesh to Madhya Pradesh. Third example. Third example. Everyone here. Rajasthan to Andhra Pradesh. Fourth example. Maharashtra to Delhi. Okay. Fifth example. Jammu and Kashmir to Jammu and Kashmir. Sixth example. Sixth example. Ladakh to Andaman and Nicobar. Ladakh to Andaman and Nicobar. Okay, next one. Delhi to Jammu and Kashmir. Can you try at least this much? Yes, try. Try at least this much. Can we start? Can we try it together everyone? Yes, if you want to try it on your own, what you can do is you can simply pause the video. Try and then check the answers along with me. Okay, I am I'm starting to, I am starting the solving here. Everyone, Maharashtra to Gujarat, Maharashtra to Gujarat, one state to another state, which tax? IGST, okay. Madhya Pradesh to Madhya Pradesh, same state, CGST 
and SGST. Okay. Rajasthan to Andhra Pradesh. Rajasthan to Andhra Pradesh. Different states. Normal. IGST will be applicable. Maharashtra to Delhi. Ma'am, Delhi was a union territory but with its own state legislature. So, it is a state. So, Maharashtra to Delhi. Normal. One state to another state. IGST. Right? Jammu Kashmir to Jammu Kashmir. Jammu Kashmir was also a union territory with its own state legislature. So, normal state, state to state, within state, within state, CGST and SGST, right? Ladakh, Ladakh was union territory with no state legislature, means UTGST should come, means UTGST is applicable, but it is giving to Andaman and Nicobar, it is giving to Andaman and Nicobar, means one union territory giving it to another union territory. UTGST will be applicable only if it is within the same union territory. So, here can we say this will be considered as one state to another state? So, IGST will be applicable. Yes, this is important. Huh? This one is important. Even though it is that kind of a union territory, but still IGST is applicable because it is not within the same union territory. Had it been Ladakh to Ladakh then? Had it been Ladakh to Ladakh then? Then it would have been CGST and UTGST. Okay. Then Delhi to Jammu Kashmir. Delhi. Delhi is a union territory with own state. So state to another union territory with same with state legislature. So can we say can we say IGST will be applicable here also? Are you clear with this? Yes. Let's take one more example. Everyone here. I am taking one more example. Uh, Lakshwadeep, Lakshwadeep to Lakshwadeep, Lakshwadeep to Lakshwadeep. Can we say it is a union territory with no state legislature? Yes, and it is within the same one only. So, can you give the answer? CGST and UTGST. Are you able to understand this everyone? Yes. Okay. Can we proceed ahead? Can we proceed ahead? Yes. I hope you have written all these. Okay, so we first discussed, we were discussing about the framework. In that first we discussed about dual model. Both of them have the powers to impose uh, levy GST. Then we studied about different, different laws. Right? Now, now let's go to the third part of it. Let's go to the third part of it. That is classification of goods and services. Now we know that GST is applicable on goods also. GST is applicable on services also. So, what they have done is, for this I will refer the textbook only because it will become very very simple for me also to write down things. Okay, everyone here. Yes. Now, see the third one. Classification of goods and services. For goods, for goods what they have done is, see now, there are some goods which will be levied at the rate of 5%. There will be some goods which will be taxable at the rate of 12%, some at 28% and so on. So, they have done the classification because we will require a table now. That so and so goods are there, this rate will be applicable. So and so goods are there, this rate will be applicable. So for that, they have done a coding. Okay, and that is called as HSN code. Harmonized system of nomenclature. Harmonized system of nomenclature. HSN code is used for classifying the goods. That which goods will be applicable, which, which goods will be taxable at what rate. Okay, so... Uh, what we will do is, suppose if I want to check what is the GST rate on this AC remote. So, I will check for the HSN code, okay, in the law. I will check for the HSN code of the AC remote and then I will get the rate applicable, okay. Then similarly, this was for the goods and now we have got for services also. For services also, they have done the classification. Example, example, if I say teaching services or coaching services these are taxable at the rate of 18% okay then we say let's say uh, 
printing only printing services then some are taxable at the rate of 5% some are taxable at the rate of 12% so we will have to for that we will have to refer a chart that what rates are applicable for that they have prescribed some service accounting codes okay service accounting codes and i will go and check the service required service accounting code in the law and from there i will get the description of that service and the rate of tax applicable on that service okay so for goods we have got the hsn code and for service we have got the sac very clear with this so for this purpose we can say that in the third part classification of goods and services have been done properly Yes, okay. Then going on to the next one that is composition scheme. Okay, there is something called as composition scheme. Now composition scheme we are going to study uh, later in detail but here since they have just given you an overview let me tell you this. Now we know that whenever there is an intrastate supply we have got the CGST and SGST or UTGST and whenever there is an interstate supply at that time we have got the IGST applicable. Okay, now means we will have to pay this tax. This tax is payable. This tax is payable on every supply that is made by every taxable person. Okay, if I am a taxable person, if I am a registered person under GST, I will have to pay the taxes. Okay, but then this becomes difficult for small people. Okay, for small taxpayers or for small businessmen, small manufacturers. Because will they pay attention to their business or will they pay attention to the taxes? So, for them, for people whose business is at a smaller scale at this point of time, for them we have introduced something called as composition scheme where in a simple manner, okay, without maintaining much of records, without maintaining much of books of accounts, you can simply pay the taxes. Okay, for them this composition scheme is applicable. Are you clear with this? Okay. Then next thing for GST that we need to know is something called as a registration process. Okay. Now let's say today, I, say for example, today I am starting uh, my new business. Okay. Means am I supposed to pay GST right from the day one onwards? Or will I be liable to pay GST from first year onwards? Or when will I be covered under GST? Like in income tax, you must have studied. Only when your income exceeds the basic exemption limit, NTI exceeds the basic exemption limit, at that time we are required to pay the income tax. Okay, similar thing is there under GST also. Only when your threshold limit, okay, only when your threshold limit is exceeded, means you cross a particular limit, then only you are required to get yourself registered under GST. Okay, it's not that you are liable from day one onwards, it's not that. Okay, so registration also we have got a separate chapter altogether. But yes, you should know that once my limit is exceeded, okay, example, once my turnover exceeds 20 lakh rupees or once my turnover exceeds 10 lakh rupees or once my turnover exceeds 40 lakh rupees, whatever are the limits given, once that exceeds, then only you are liable to get yourself registered under GST. Yes, okay. Then, then we have got certain exemptions in GST also. Okay, uh, uh, just like example, very simple and very basic example and very raw example. Agricultural income. Agricultural income is exempted from income tax. Okay, similarly, there will be some goods and some services which are also exempted from GST. Okay, I'll, I can give you some basic example. Example, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, salt such things such basic basic things are also exempted from gst so we have got altogether different chapter called as exemptions from gst there we will study what all things are exempted here we should just know that not everything is coming under gst there will be some things which are totally exempted from gst are you clear with this yes okay then then you have got most important thing you have got a website. Okay, you have got a website called as GST portal. GST portal called as uh, www.gst.gov.in. Okay, www.gst.gov.in. 
gst.gov.in basically this just like for income tax also we have got website similarly for gst also we have got the website this website okay this website i'll show you okay in the upcoming session i will show you the interface of that website also uh, on this particular this particular website is managed by a company called as gstn goods and service tax network okay this is a section 8 company actually section 8 means non profit company this this website is managed by gstn okay and yes definitely this has been set up by the central government only so that so that if i am a taxpayer and if i want to know anything about gst or if i want to file the returns if i want to pay the taxes then there is a one stop website here called as gst dot uh, uh, gst.gov.in on this we can go and we can uh, use this website for our gst purposes are you clear with this yes now what is the function what is the work of this gstm now if sub say for example if i want to get myself registered under gst then i will have to apply for online registration online registration is there under gst so online registration i will go to the website of gst.gov.in and i can go and make an application there okay if i want to file the returns gst just like we file income tax returns similarly uh, if we want to file any gst returns go to the website you can file the returns okay if i want to pay the taxes go to the website okay and uh, let's say if i want to uh, update my address if i want to update my profile on the website of gst you can do it on so and so website are you clear with this this is the function this is the function of gst and it will make sure that all these uh, up, uh, all these things are available on the website of gst very very clear till here everyone yes okay Okay, then uh, let's go to the next one after GSTN. GSTN was your GST network which was managing the website of gst.gov.in. That is the most common portal which is basically that is a link. Basically that is an interface between the users that is the taxpayers and the government. Right. Then going on to the next one, which talks about GSPs and ASPs. Okay. Now, what does this GSP and ASP stands for? GSP stands for GST Suvida Providers and ASP stands for Application Service Providers. Okay. Just try to understand. As the name suggests, okay. GSP stands for GST Suvidha providers, okay, and ASP stands for application service providers. Okay, just see the difference in the names. Okay, now let's discuss about GST Suvidha providers first of all. Now, uh, if a particular website is to be run, can we say there will be some IT company, information technology company, which is going to help them to run a website okay have you heard about a company called a company a company called as tcs tata consultancy services yes this is the it company this is an information technology company this company helps this company provides the necessary support to the gstn to run the website called as gst.gov.in okay therefore here just like tcs tcs is not the only service provider this is not the only suvidha suvidha means help service okay uh, so just like tcs there can be other service providers also and these people these people this it companies are called as gst suvidha providers because they help the government to run this particular website okay then we can take help then for some particular things we can take help from third party also okay those are called as application application service providers okay tcs will be called direct company which is helping direct company which is helping that was called as gst suvidha providers and if they are taking help from any next person that is called as application that third company will be called as application service providers okay and they are also helping they are also helping us 
to develop the website of or to you know run the website of gst.gov.in okay so if i want to sum this up okay i'll just sum this up which is the main website main website is gst.gov.in right this website is managed by whom this website is managed by gstn which is a section 8 company non profit company okay gstn takes the help of whom it takes the help of tcs for example so tcs will be called as gsp gst suvidha providers and tcs can also take help from any third party those people those people will be called as application service providers okay this is how the entire thing flows then okay so 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 let me recollect all the points okay we started with framework first framework was dual gst model okay that is both central government as well as state government has the authority to levy the taxes then second one we studied the types of taxes cgst sgst igst utgst etc when these will be applicable we took many examples etc in that also then we discussed about classification this was our third point that is classification of goods and services for goods they have given hsn for services they have given sac uh, codes have been prescribed where different different products have been listed and we can just refer the code and find out what is the rate applicable okay then we studied about composition scheme what was composition scheme talking about composition scheme was talking about small tax payers uh, relief given to small tax payers and easy method done for them to pay the taxes then we studied about registration procedure that whenever a limit is exceeded whenever my turnover crosses a particular limit then only i will be liable to get myself registered and now can you tell me on which website will we go and do the registration we will have to go and log in create a login id and then log in and then do the registration on the website of gst.gov.in the next point that we studied here was about the exemptions right what did we study about the exemptions that there are many such products many such services goods or services which are exempted from the gst and for that we have got a separate chapter called as exemption chapter right then we studied about this common website seventh point that is gst common portal gst.gov.in and then we studied about the next two people that is gst suvidha providers and application service providers okay suvidha stands for service right suvidha stands for service then after that the next thing then after that the next thing is something called as compensation cess which i had mentioned i'll tell you later okay now listen what happened was when this gst was introduced okay when this gst was introduced at that time uh, before that okay i'll just tell you before that also before gst vat and service tax was applicable vat and service tax was applicable service tax was collected by the center central government vat was collected by the states okay then what happened in case of gst both of them <coughs> center as well as state started collecting taxes on it right now what happened was earlier earlier let's take the example of goods on goods vat was levied only by the state right it was levied only by the state but now on goods vat uh, gst is levied by center as well as state both of them take the taxes can we say there can be some loss to the states earlier they were taking full vat only by the state full vat was charged only by the state now gst is charged by both of them half half can we say states have suffered some losses because of this means their revenue has decreased after gst has come into picture for that purpose they had introduced a uh, act called as gst compensation act remember gst compensation cess act 2017 was introduced so this was introduced to compensate the states whatever loss states would have whatever revenue has been reduced because of gst implementation center said that no problem okay don't worry don't cry we will give you some compensation for the losses that you have suffered are you clear with this yes so acha who will give this to whom so this tax will also be collected this uh, this tax this compensation says will also be collected from the consumers only okay we will only pay this tax to the center and then center will give it to the state 
सो मैम दिस इज एप्लीकेबल ऑन विच प्रोडक्ट दिस इज एप्लीकेबल ऑन दो लग्जरी और डी मेरिड प्रोडक्ट लाइक टोबैको देन पान मसाला मोटर कार एक्सेट्रा ऑन दो टाइप ऑफ गुड्स हाई वैल्यू गुड्स ऑन द और द गुड्स विच वी डोंट वॉन्ट टू प्रमोट on those kind of goods this tax is levied and then this share is given to the state because they have suffered some losses because of gst implementation okay what is this tax called as this tax is called as compensation cess are you clear with this yes okay then next point next point is basic thing gst is applicable on which products and not applicable on which products let's try to understand okay first of all i'll take this point to the next page everyone here gst point so they say that gst is normally okay it is levyable on all the goods and services theek hai sab ke upar applicable hoga jitne bhi goods and services hai sab ke upar applicable hoga but except okay normally it is applicable on all but except what except liquor okay liquor daru alcoholic liquor for human consumption okay the liquor that we use for human consumption that is still outside the purview of gst okay now let me tell you the details of the same okay first thing first thing is alcoholic liquor for human consumption this is totally outside the purview of gst okay apart from that apart from that डीजल पेट्रोल एविएशन टर्बाइन फ्यूल द फ्यूल दैट इज यूज फॉर द एयरक्राफ्ट एंड ऑल ए टी एफ एविएशन टर्बाइन फ्यूल ओके देन नैचुरल गैस ओके देन पेट्रोलियम क्रूड ओके दीज थिंग्स आर ऑल्सो ओके फर्स्ट पॉइंट वॉज एल्कोहलिक लिकर एंड सेकेंड थिंग इज दीज थिंग्स रिलेटेड टू पेट्रोलियम क्रूड डीजल पेट्रोल नेचुरल गैस एविएशन टर्बाइन फूल इवन दीज आर आउटसाइड द पर व्यू ऑफ जी एस टी आई यू क्लियर विद दिस बट सी द डिफरेंस इन वर्डिंग दैट दे हैव यूज इन लॉ एल्कोहलिक लिकर इज टोटली आउटसाइड द पर व्यू ऑफ जी एस टी टोटली मीन्स दे हैव इन टोल्ड एनीथिंग अबाउट इट okay but for this for this diesel petrol atf etc for the second point they are telling that gst will be applicable on it from a till the date it is notified means any day any day gst council okay gst that team can come up with a notification that gst is applicable on petrol diesel and these five things from so and so date so on these things gst will not be applicable till a notified date and once a date is notified from that day gst will start to be applicable on it okay but nothing relating to date has been told for this liquor are you clear with this everyone yes okay then uh, one more thing which i would like to tell you here one extra thing which i would like to tell which i have put it in the notes also okay for your reference for your reference uh yes here it is in this table okay now see goods and services or we can call it as gst is applicable on what so they say that it is totally outside gst till the council recommends okay now see alcoholic liquor for home consumption this was outside gst okay can we say gst is not applicable on it means ma'am do you mean that it is totally tax free answer is no it is not tax free okay when this is manufactured when liquor is manufactured at that time state excise duty is applicable means excise duty will be levyable by that respective state okay state excise duty will be applicable and whenever it is sold whenever liquor is sold at that time gst is not applicable but vat and cst is applicable since it is goods so vat will be applicable and if it is sold in the other state then cst will be applicable. okay so at the time of manufacturing at the time of manufacturing excise duty will be levied by the state and at the time of sale vat or cst will be applicable because till now gst is not applicable very clear with this okay then for petroleum crude petrol diesel natural gas atf etc 
for that also gst is not applicable but excise duty will be levied at the time of manufacture but excise will be levied by the center by the central government and at the time of sale gst is not applicable but vat and cst will be applicable at the time of sale are you understanding this everyone yes okay then the next one okay what is given in the next one just try to understand this okay next point everyone here so these were the two things on which gst is not at all applicable okay <coughs> now two more products about which i want to give you an information that is tobacco okay first thing about which i want to give you an information is tobacco okay just try to understand now i did not say that tobacco is not under the purview of gst tobacco since it was not there on the last page so it will come under the purview of gst okay gst is applicable on tobacco but 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 what are they trying to tell us here is on tobacco gst is also applicable and excise duty can also be levied by the center to to taxes ma'am why such a punishment can you tell me why such a punishment tobacco can we say it is a demerit goods we don't want to promote such a goods so they say that gst will also be applicable and excise will also be applicable which will be imposed by the center are you clear with this so if the tobacco or tobacco products are manufactured in india at that time excise duty will be levied by the center and at the time of sale even gst will be applicable on it are you clear with this so this is double double punishment right this is double double punishment similarly when we talk about some drugs like opium okay narcotic drugs other narcotic drugs okay or he indian hemp again these are your demerit products right so on this also gst is also applicable and excise is also applicable but this excise will be levied by the state are you clear with this again because this is a demerit product okay so on both the demerit products excise as well as gst both is applicable but just remember at the time of tobacco excise will be levied by the center and at the time of drugs it will be levied by the state yes and to sum this up i have also put this in this chart see this tobacco okay it is within the purview of gst okay gst and central excise is applicable and in case of drugs okay in case of drugs gst and state excise applicable very very clear till here everyone yes simple point but important okay simple but important especially this alcoholic liquor and all those things this you have to keep in mind okay this you have to keep in mind please don't forget it are you understanding this everyone yes on this you can get mcqs also and we have questions given in the module etc also so please 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 take care of it yes okay going ahead i'll show it to you in the textbook also everyone this was in our notes in our notes this was our 10th point okay same way in your textbook also it is there in the 10th point that gst is the tax which is applicable on what all things and yes one important point here real estate sector okay sale or purchase of immovable property houses offices etc gst is not levied on immovable property okay uh, gst just like they had told it is applicable on all goods and services but gst is not applicable on immovable property we'll study more things about it uh, when we go ahead in the next chapter also we have something about it but as of now just remember that real estate sector is totally outside the gst for the time being okay for the time now can we say because of all these things because of this gst etc can we say there are many such taxes there are many such taxes which have now been totally stopped okay there are many taxes which have been stopped because now gst is applicable on it okay one such tax is cst okay exception in some products is there okay just like we studied for alcoholic liquor that is there that is okay that is exception but apart from that there are many such taxes which are now not applicable because gst is applicable 
on it okay so there are some taxes which have been which have been subsumed means which have been converted into gst okay let's see the list okay everyone here let's see the list of taxes which have come into gst now which have been closed and which have been come into gst now okay these are some central government taxes and these are some state government taxes let's see what are those everyone here first of all excise duty okay central excise duty and additional excise duty these have been cancelled because now gst is applicable service tax which was levied by the center gone because gst is applicable okay some specific excise duty under so and so act gone countervailing duty and special countervailing duty which used to be there under excise earlier gone okay gone means what has the product been made tax free no but gst has been applicable on it okay then cst gone some surcharge and cess which were there earlier gone so mainly excise duty is central excise duty gone cst gone okay then your uh, surcharge and cess gone these were the central government taxes which are gone and now which has been replaced by the gst similarly there were some taxes which were levied by the state government like some surcharge and cess was there just like here it was central surcharge and cess here it is state surcharge and cess gone some entertainment tax gone some entertainment tax still there okay some gone some still there see except those levied by the local bodies you must have heard about municipal corporation there are some taxes which are levied by municipal corporation those are still there but those which are levied by the state government that is gone okay then taxes on lottery betting gambling gone because now gst is applicable on it okay entry tax gone purchase tax gone vat gone sales tax the one which was there even before vat that is also gone luxury tax gone taxes on advertisement gone these were some of the taxes which were earlier levied by the state government that is now totally gone because now this has been replaced by the gst so you can randomly remember uh, the list exact remembrance is not required but these are some taxes which have gone and has been replaced by the gst ma'am which taxes are still there along with gst so custom duty at the time of import that is there okay when we import the goods or services that is still there stamp duty values when you purchase the property gst is not there but stamp duty is there property tax that you pay on the property that is still there entertainment tax which one will be still there which is levied by the state government or which one will be levied by the local authorities by the local authorities municipal corporation and duty to compensate gst remember compensation says that is still there because that we are still going to pay to the states because they have suffered some losses due to implementation of gst are you clear with this and is yes, obviously along with this gst is anyway there because that is the new tax that is a new tax which is going to be prevalent now are you clear tell your everyone yes are you clear tell your okay then can we go to the next one yes can we go to the next one everyone here next is something that is very very important in fact the next two points next two points are going to be super duper important okay next two are your last two points let's try to understand it everyone here let's try to understand now they say that i'll take the 11th point 10th point was this okay now let's go to the 11th point which they where they talk about credit utilization okay here they are talking about credit utilization what do you mean by credit utilization remember in the initial examples that we had taken that we were uh, at the time of sale we were charging gst we were paying it to the government then the other person the other person from whom we had collected that tax that person was taking the credit of the same right that person had taken the credit of the same now they say that if suppose if suppose there is an igst credit left with me okay if there is an igst credit means i have paid i have paid tax in the form of igst so i have got the igst credit for what purpose can i use this igst credit 
So this IGST credit can, has to be first used for IGST tax liability. Means if any IGST is payable, first use the IGST credit. Okay. If you still have the balance, then it can be used for CGST or SGST liability. There is no sequence. You can either use it first for CGST or then for SGST. But if you have IGST credit kept with you, means you have paid taxes in the form of IGST, means you have got the IGST credit with you, please use it for paying the IGST tax liability. Still, if there is any credit left with you, then please go and pay the, C you can use that credit for payment of CGST or SGST tax liability. Okay. But if you have CGST credit, then can you tell me first this will be used for what? First, this will be used for CGST tax liability. Okay. Then it can be used for IGST tax liability, but not for SGST. Okay. Not for SGST. Can you give me similarly the answer? Suppose if we have SGST credit. Okay. Suppose if we have SGST credit, this can be used first for SGST liability. If you still have some credit available, please use it for IGST tax liability. Means it cannot be used for CGST. So can we say CGST and SGST cannot be used for each other? Okay. Now listen, this is just a theory. Okay. This is just a theory. Now let's try to understand its implementation. Okay. Let's try to understand its implementation. Can we start? Yes. Okay. I'm just giving you a few examples. Just try to understand everyone here. Okay. This is very, very important because these are the basics. Okay. Now let's say, let's say Mr. X, he is of Maharashtra. Okay. He has purchased goods worth rupees 100. He has paid, he has purchased from, he is also from Maharashtra and he has purchased from Maharashtra. So can I say, he would have paid CGST and SGST? Yes. Let's say he has paid 9 rupees of CGST, 9 rupees of IGST, total 18% of 100. Total, he has paid 118. This is his purchases. Okay. Now listen, everyone here carefully. Okay. Now he wants to sell. He wants to sell some goods. He wants to sell some goods in Maharashtra. Let's say basic selling price is equal to 50 rupees. He wants to sell in Maharashtra. Can we say this is an intrastate sale? So again, CGST and SGST will be applicable. So he will, at the time of sale, at the time of sale, he will charge CGST 9%, 9 and 9, 18%, half up. Yes, 4.5 rupees. SGST, 4.5 rupees. And his final selling price will be 59 rupees. Yes, then he wants to sell some goods to Gujarat. He wants to sell some goods to Gujarat. Let's say selling price is equal to selling price is equal to 60. CGST. CGST will be applicable or IGST will be applicable. Can we say IGST will be applicable because this is sale from Maharashtra to Gujarat. Okay. Now listen. So can we say IGST full 18% will be applicable because IGST will be fully collected by the central government and then it will share it with the state government. So full uh, 60 into 18%. This gives me 10.8. Okay. So my final selling price will be 70.8. Right. Now listen. I have, I am Mr. X. Let's say I am Mr. X. I have purchased these goods and then these have been sold in Maharashtra and some have been sold in Gujarat. 
now how much tax will be payable to the government that is my question how much tax will be payable to the government can we say tax is payable at the time of sale okay so i have sold goods in maharashtra at that time cgst payable is 4.5 sgst payable is 4.5 do i have the credit available with me yes credit is always available at the time of purchases means at the time of purchase i have already paid 9 and 9 rupees yes now cgst can we say everyone here see this cgst payable on sale is equal to 4.5 right sgst payable on sale is equal to 4.5 this one yes do i have the credit available with me yes i have 9 and 9 rupees of credit available with me first cgst credit i will use yes cgst credit i have how much i have 9 so i can use 4.5 out of it so this liability will be zero okay similarly sgst credit do i have available with me yes full 9 i have so can i use 4.5 out of it yes so can we say liability is zero now acha how much credit am i left with left out credit can we say cgst credit left out is balance 4.5 i had total 9 i utilize 4.5 here okay and sgst credit is also equal to 4.5 balance this is the credit that i have available okay now can we say this is paid and even this is paid now i am also supposed to pay igst okay now igst payable okay igst payable how much was my igst payable that was 10.8 do i have igst credit available with me no if i don't have igst credit available with me okay if i don't have any igst credit available with me can i use cgst and sgst credit available for igst liability yes what cannot be used against what cgst against sgst and sgst against cgst that cannot be used rest everything is allowed okay so from this first i will use my cgst credit how much was my leftover credit 4.5 and how much was my sgst credit left your left out credit that was also 4.5 yes so can we say i have got 9 available with me so 1.80 liability still payable and this i will pay to the government in cash means credit i cannot use so i will have to pay by transferring the money are you understanding this everyone yes this is how this is how the credit is used and the liability is paid so can we say everyone here just try to understand can we say i had paid see in short shortcut i am telling you in short earlier i had paid 18 rupees to the government okay now this is the total credit available with me now how much is more payable 9 4.5 plus 4.5 that is 9 9 plus 10.8 19.8 is payable so i utilize the credit of 18 and balance how much is left 1.8 is left which i am paid in cash are you understanding this simple yes okay for this this is very very important which liability first see if i have igst credit available with me use that credit for payment of igst same head igst liability if you still have some credit available use it for cgst use it for sgst no problem acha if i have cgst credit available with me if i have cgst credit available with me first use it for cgst liability still left use it for igst not for sgst if i have s state see sgst credit available use it for sgst liability if still left use it for igst liability but do not use it for cgst 
सो वॉट इज नॉट अलाउड सी जी एस टी अगेन्स्ट एस जी एस टी इज नॉट अलाउड आर यू क्लियर विद दिस सी जी एस टी क्रेडिट अगेंस्ट एस जी एस टी लाइबिलिटी और वाइज वर्ड सा एस जी एस टी क्रेडिट अगेंस्ट सी जी एस टी लाइबिलिटी दिस इज टोटली नॉट अलाउड Are you clear with this? Yes. Okay. This is all about manner of utilization of ITC. Okay, manner of utilization of ITC. Yes, I explained you with the help of a numerical example, and I explained a part of it, part of the next point also. That is seamless flow of credit. Okay, I will take few more examples. Everyone here. Okay. Now listen. Remember when we were studying about GST, they told that because there is a good chain, chain going on, continuous chain going on. Because of that, it is very simple. In GST, it has become very simple, and there is no cascading effect. There is no tax on tax applicable. Okay. Let's try to understand how does that work. Before that, let me tell you. Let me ask you rather. CGST belongs to whom? CGST tax belongs to whom? It belongs to the central government. Okay. SGST belongs to whom? It belongs to the state government. Can you tell me which state government will it go? Will it go to the destination, final, wherever the goods are consumed? To that state government, it will go. Perfect. IGST. IGST will be collected by the central government, but then it will be shared between whom? It will be shared between the central as well as the state. Very clear with this. Now I will prove this with the help of numerical example. Can we start, everyone? Can we start? Yes. Okay. Now first I will take the example. Everyone here, okay? We are taking numerical example. Everyone here. first i will take the example of intra state supply okay let's take the example of intra state supply everyone here in case of intra state intra state means within the state let's say i am x from maharashtra okay i am x from maharashtra i want to sell goods to a of maharashtra same same state which tax will be applicable now you can tell me maharashtra to maharashtra which tax will be applicable CGST, SGST. Okay, so I sold goods of hundred. I levied CGST nine rupees. I levied SGST nine rupees. Total selling price is equal to hundred and eighteen rupees. Are you clear with this? X sold this to A. Okay, then. So can we say now? Can we say now? CGST will get nine rupees. When X sells it to A, we'll pay nine rupees to CGST. We'll pay balance another nine rupees to SGST. Which SGST? Which state? Everything is happening in Maharashtra. Okay. Then after that, A sells it. A. Okay. X sold it to A. Now A wants to sell it to B. Again, Maharashtra to Maharashtra. Maharashtra to Maharashtra. Okay. it is selling the same goods at 120 rupees okay it is selling the same goods at 120 rupees maharashtra to maharashtra can we say again cgst and sg sgst will be applicable yes okay so 120 into uh, 9% that will give me 10.8 SGST again ten point eight, right? So one twenty plus twenty one point six, right? This gives me one forty one point six. Are you clear till here? Now when A is selling it to B, A will have to pay to the government. Yes, A will have to pay this much to the government. But has A already paid something earlier when it was purchasing from X? Yes. How much is already kept with the government? Nine and nine is already kept with the government, right? So can we say instead of paying ten point eight, 
it will pay only 1.8 okay 1.8 goes to the cgst and similarly instead of paying this 10.8 we will also subtract the credit of sgst 9 so we will pay another 1.8 can you now tell me final amounts kept earned by the government CGST has earned 10.8 rupees. SGST has also earned 10.8. Finally, this much amount of tax has reached the government. And which government? Because everything was intrastate, therefore Maharashtra. This goes to the central government. This goes to the Maharashtra state government. Chapter over. Did you understand this calculation everyone? Yes? Okay. Till intrastate, everything is okay. Okay. Till intrastate, everything is okay. Now let's go to let's go to interstate. Okay, let's go to interstate supply and let's complicate the things now. Okay, now I I am making three accounts. Okay, I am making CGST account. I am making SGST account, and I am making IGST account. Okay, everyone. I'm I'll just give you examples. You have to give me the answers. Okay, everyone with me. Let's say I am X of Maharashtra. Okay, I am X of Maharashtra. I'll take every possible example here. Okay, I want to sell to A of Maharashtra. Hundred rupees of goods. What will be applicable? CGST, SGST. Okay, CGST, SGST. Which SGST? Maharashtra. Total selling price 118. Can we say X will collect this 9 and 9 rupees from A and it will pay it to the respective governments. So, can we say SGST will receive 9, Maharashtra, CGST will receive 9, Maharashtra SGST will also receive rupees 9. Clear till here? Then after that, let's go to the next one. Okay. A of Maharashtra sells it to B of Gujarat. Okay. It sells it to B of Gujarat. Same goods after adding profit 120 rupees. Maharashtra to Gujarat. Maharashtra to Gujarat. Interstate. Which tax will be applicable? IGST will be applicable. Okay, IGST applicable, so entire 18% applicable, will not divide it into two. Okay, so 21.6 is the tax and 141.6 is the final tax. A is selling it to B, A has collected the tax from the government. Okay, now listen. A has collected the tax from B of Gujarat. Will A, now A will have to pay 21.6 in the IGST account. But does A have some credit available? Yes, A had also purchased it from X. It has credit of SGST and CGST. Can we use CGST, SGST credit for IGST liability? Yes, that was allowed. So can we say now, can we say now ultimately IGST payable. IGST should get how much? IGST should get 21.6, right? But for that, we will use CGST credit. We will take CGST. We will take some money from the CGST account. How much money we had in CGST? 9. Then we will take some money from the SGST credit. 9. Okay. 18 gone. So 3.60 is still payable. IGST payable in cash. Right? So now, how does it happen? How does the working happen? This working is done by the government back end. We do not come to know about it. Okay. So can we say, we took, we took 9 from CGST and we added in IGST. Okay. We took 9 from SGST and we added in IGST. And we paid some amount in cash also that is 3.6. How much has reached IGST? Can we say 21.6 has reached IGST which was supposed to be reached? So now can we say CGST account is 0, Maharashtra state gone, IGST has 21.6 available with itself. 
very clear till here okay now see the game okay now see the game everyone here now let's say b of gujarat same person huh? b of gujarat is selling it to y of gujarat okay same state which taxes will be applicable same state which taxes will be applicable cgst and sgst yes okay now see uh, now see the magic everyone here. it wants to sell at 150 rupees okay it wants to sell at 150 rupees so cgst and sgst which sgst gujarat Nine percent and nine percent. It comes to thirteen point five and thirteen point five. Twenty seven. One eighty seven is the final selling. So B will collect from Y one eighty seven rupees, and now it will have to pay this taxes to the government. Right now, does B have some credit available with itself? Yes, B has. When B had purchased. it had paid taxes of 21.6 totally so now it has some credit available with it okay now cgst liability is equal to 13.5 can i use igst credit against it yes how much igst credit do i have i have 21.6 available okay so at least i can pay full 13.5 here okay cgst liability is zero SGST liability is how much? Again thirteen point five. Do I have sufficient IGST credit available with me? Hey, I had how much earlier in IGST credit? Twenty one point six. Out of which I just utilized. I just utilized this thirteen point five. Right. So I am left with eight point one. Credit which I will utilize it now. Okay, now how much is my liability payable? My liability payable is five point four. That is SGST five point four is paid. Are you clear till here? Yes. Now listen. Now listen. Every one year, just try to understand this. I will pay in cash. Now what will happen with the government's revenue? Till now twenty one point six was kept. This was zero. This was zero. And IGST had twenty one point six till the last transaction. Okay, now after that, what happened? Gujarat to Gujarat sale happened, right? In Gujarat to Gujarat sale, I paid CGST by utilizing IGST credit. Yes, how much? How much did I pay? Thirteen point five. So can I say I will subtract thirteen point five from here and I will transfer it to the CGST account? Correct. okay then after that after that in case of sgst how much amount did i pay by using igst credit i paid 8.1 so can i say from here i removed 8.1 and i paid and i paid to gujarat sgst right am i correct yes and then some amount i paid some amount of sgst i paid in cash also that was 5.4 again which sgst are we talking about because everything is gujarat gujarat so only gujarat so i paid 5.4 year in cash can i say my igst balance is zero yes cgst balance is 13.5 Maharashtra is zero. Gujarat is again thirteen point five. Ultimately, can you now tell me where are the goods lying? Where are the goods lying? The goods are lying in Gujarat, right? The goods are lying in Gujarat. So, which state government should get money? Gujarat government should get money. Gujarat government has got its share of thirteen point five, and center has got its half share of thirteen point. Rest all the accounts are zero automatically. Are you understanding this? This concept, this concept is called as seamless flow of credit. 
Okay, this is called as seamless flow of credit. Are you understanding? Yes. Okay, now listen everyone. Just try to understand. See the words are complex statement that they are using. Since it is a destination based consumption tax, revenue of SGST will accrue to the consuming state, the one which is consuming. Revenue of interstate sale, interstate sale will not accrue to the exporting state and the exporting state will be required to transfer to the center, the credit of SGST used in payment of IGST. If we have used, if we have used any credit, okay, if we have used any credit of SGST for payment of IGST, then that will be transferred. Okay, means what? Means what? Did we use, did we use SGST for payment of IGST? Yes, we use this credit. So, this was transferred from that state to IGST. Are you clear with this? Similarly, did we use IGST? Did we use IGST for payment of Gujarat SGST? Yes, this 8.1 was used. So, that will be transferred from IGST to the state. Okay, so you need not by heart these statements. You, you just need to understand this statement. Very, very clear with this. Yes, ultimately the revenue will reach to the center and ultimately the revenue will reach to the consuming state. I hope I am very, very clear till here everyone. Yes. <laughs> just like I have given you an example similarly one more examples are given here in your textbook just the figures have been changed this is intrastate and similarly they have given you the example for interstate supply also how the transaction goes on and this is the final statement just like we got the answers this is the final statement so you may try it in addition okay but the concept is going to remain the are you clear till here? Yes, all good? Okay. These class notes anyways I will be sharing with you. So, you can just write down the example from there. Yes. Okay. So, I think we are good to go now. We can proceed ahead. So, these were, whatever we have studied till here, these were the framework of GST or basically we can say different, different points relating to GST. Uh, obviously, these, nothing of these were put in a logical sequence. Asa nahi hai ki soch ke ek 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 point dala tha. They have just randomly put, okay, they have randomly put some points together and uh, they have just uh, tried to explain us uh, what all things are concerning the GST. Or what all things are going to be there under GST. Oh, on a very, uh, you know, broad level they have told. In detail when we go, there will be so many things that we have to study about GST. But broadly they have told. Main, most important thing that you need to understand here is the credit flow. How does the credit flows? Okay, that from one person to another, one state to another and ultimately it belongs to home. That thing you need to understand it very properly. Now, let's uh, go to the next part. Okay. Next thing is something again very very general that is benefits of GST. Okay. Benefits of GST. So, they have divided into four parts. First of all, is it helping the economy? Definitely, GST was launched with the motto called as one nation one tax because they wanted to eradicate all the other indirect taxes. They have tried to some extent, they have tried yes. Uh, but still some taxes like we studied about tobacco, we studied about drugs etc. They are still, uh, excise etc. is still applicable there. But yes, slowly and steadily they will even streamline that. So definitely it has helped the economy because uh, it has, it's like uh, a particular sale will happen and a particular type of tax, only one type of tax will be levied on it. So they have called it as creation of unified national market. Okay, one nation, one market, one nation, one tax, that kind of a thing has happened here. So, now there is no distortion. Even if you are selling the goods within your same state or even if you are selling the goods in the other state, doesn't matter. Same taxes, same amount is payable. Okay, Achha, because of this, because of this, 
can we say uh, now because uh, you get the credit okay because you get the credit of taxes that you have paid uh, more number of people are interested in manufacturing the products in india only because whatever they are manufacturing here in india and whatever taxes they are paying for that they will get a credit ultimately their cost will reduce so this has given a boost to make in india initiative imports have reduced for some products definitely not all but for some products the imports have reduced because people are willing to manufacture the goods here in india itself okay acha because of that obviously if you are manufacturing here in india your uh, jobs will increase opportunities will increase investment in india will increase right acha simplified tax structure that was the most important motive ease of doing business have has been eased to some extent definitely it has eased and uh, you know earlier there were tax leakages earlier there were cascading effects on uh, and all those things now that has been simplified so there is some certainty certainty bharosa hai okay kind of we have trust in the tax administration then because of website info, information technology usage things have become very automated and cost have reduced now when i file uh, my classes gst return i do it by myself okay irrespective of fact whether i am a ca or not if you just understand this basic credit things okay and if you have some basic knowledge of gst you can do the things on your own so compliance cost has reduced because things have even become automated and things have comparatively simplified for me personally speaking when it was service tax you know uh, filing the service tax return what was a headache for me like i used to take help of someone else while filing the return but for gst it is very very simple then how has it helped the industry the trade industry okay so this because many exemptions have been provided so it has provided uh, benefits to the agriculture sector the primary sector which is there for our country okay cascading effects have totally gone now and because of composition scheme small businessmen have been helped here okay so ultimately it has you know our revenue tax revenue has Im increased every quarter we get a news this is the highest collection this is the highest collection this is the highest collection so because of transparency now everyone has to pay the taxes okay because of demonetization every cash has almost gone cash transactions have reduced to a very larger extent because of gst bill okay because of gst and all those things tax collection have gone to an next level altogether so that was the motive of the government and it has been very much successful in accomplishing it right okay let's proceed to the last part of the chapter everyone constitutional provisions uh, very very basic things i'll just explain it to you i'll just give you an overview of it everyone now in india when we talk about our federal structure okay you must have studied this in your civics in school in india we have got a three tier okay three level of federal structure first one is our union government that is our central government second level is our state government and third level is our local authority okay union government is nothing but the central government state government let's say maharashtra government and local authorities is let's say uh, municipal corporations bmc tmcs that we have in our localities okay so the in india we follow this three level structure now all the three governments all the three level people have got the right to levy some or the other taxes okay so it has been distributed now when i ask you about gst can you give me can we say gst can be levied by central also and it can be levied by the government also okay when i talk about entertainment tax can it be levied by the local authority also yes so power to collect the taxes power to levy the taxes has been distributed amongst everyone it has been given to everyone are you clear with this acha acha whenever you want to introduce any particular tax it should be notified by any law example if i want to levy cgst is there any act for it yes we have got cgst act 2017 if i want to levy sgst do i have any act for it yes i have sgst act 2017 for it yes if i want to levy utgst do i have any act for it yes i have got utgst act 2017 if i want to impose compensation says 
Do I have an act for it? Yes, I have got GST compensation says that 2017. So if I want to levy any particular tax, I need an I need a law for it. If there is no law, then there can be no tax. If I want to levy income tax, then there is an income tax act for it. Yes, let's say from tomorrow, I want to levy Arpita tax. I want to levy a tax of 10% on my students called as Arpita tax. Constitutional or non-constitutional? Definitely non-constitutional. So that is totally ultra virus. That is totally illegal. So if at all I want to levy any sort of tax, first there should be a law. It should be written in the constitution. It should be written in the act that so and so taxes can be levied. Are you clear with this? This is mentioned. This is mentioned in the constitutional provision. Very clear with this. Okay. Now, there are some articles. Okay. There are some articles from the constitution that we need to refer. Okay. Now, I will just explain it to you. Everyone here. First, let us discuss about article 265. Article 265 is very simple, very sorted. It says that if you want to levy any tax, there should be an authority for it. Means there should be a law for it. That we have already discussed. No authority, no tax. If there is any authority, if someone, if any particular act has authorized you, okay, you can levy Arpita tax at the rate of 10%, then only I can levy that tax. Otherwise, it is totally ultra virus, beyond the powers of the law. Yes, okay. Then after that, next thing that we have got here is article number 245. Okay, what does article number 245 talks about? Article 245 says that in our country, okay, parliament, parliament, make laws for the entire country okay parliament make laws for the entire country and state legislature okay legislature of any particular state makes law for that particular state do we already know this answer is yes are you clear with this one simple example which i can give you for this okay gst gst cgst IGST, these are your central laws. Okay, parliament will make the laws for that. Okay, Maharashtra RERA, provisions for that will be made by Maharashtra state. Okay, Maharashtra SGST, provision for that will be made by the Maharashtra state. This is told by article number 245. So, whenever parliament is making, parliament means both the houses of parliament, Rajya Sabha and Lo Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. Whenever they are making any law, that is that will be applicable to the entire country. Okay. Whenever legislature of state is making any law, it will be applicable to that particular state whose legislature is making the law. Okay. Maharashtra cannot say that this will be applicable to whole of India. No. Okay. Maharashtra cannot say, it cannot make a law and it will say that it is applicable to whole of India. No. Very clear till you. Okay. Similarly, article number 246. Okay, article number 246 gives authority. Okay, this, this is the article 246 of the Indian constitution. So, it gives authority to union and state to levy respective tax. Okay, example, article 246 gives authority to the union government to levy CGST. It gives authority to the state to levy SGST. So, this is an article which gives the authority. This was an article which was telling that if there is any authority, then only tax can be levied. Very clear with this? Yes. Okay. Now listen. Uh, there is something called as 7th schedule to this article, to the last one. 7th schedule to article number 246 okay seventh schedule to article number 246 which gives three lists maybe you must have studied this list one is called as union list okay list two is called as state list and list three is called as concurrent list very clear till here. Union list, state list and concurrent list. Okay. Now, ma'am, what is there in this particular list? It contains the matters. Okay. It contains the matters on which central government 
has exclusive rights to make the laws. Okay, I'll give you example. Don't worry about that. Okay, it contains those matters on which central government has got exclusive, sole, monopoly rights to make the laws. Okay, then state list. Can you now frame the statement and can you now tell me? State list will contain those matters on which state government has rights to make the laws. And concurrent list contains those matters in respect of which central government and state government both have the right to make the laws. Are you clear with this? Yes, example, example, income tax, income tax is forming part of union list. Only central government has the right to make the laws. State, please keep quiet. Okay. State list. Have you heard about profession tax? Okay. There is a tax called as profession tax, which is a state matter. Only who has got the right to make the laws? Only state. Okay. GST. GST falls under concurrent list. Okay, it can fall under union list also where central government has the power to make the laws. Levy can be done by both of them, uh, but uh, there can generally what happens is central government and state government, Gen central government and state government both have the uh, rights to make the laws. Okay, but generally what happens in case of GST is generally it is approved, it is the law is made by the central government and then central government takes the recommendation okay it takes the recommendation from the state also are you clear with this example rera okay rera fits here basic common rera act for that the law is made by central government and then matters are delegated to the respective state okay maha rera maharashtra rera that is totally different are you understanding this yes then the next thing which is coming up here is need for constitutional amendment. This I have already discussed. Why there was a need for constitutional amendment? Because earlier, okay, what was the need for constitutional amendment? Earlier what had happened? Earlier what had happened? For goods. For goods, what was applicable? Only state had the powers to levy. Right? And in case of services, okay, and CST was also there on which center was taking the tax. On services, there was no involvement of the state, only center was collecting the taxes. Right? Now what has happened in case of GST? GST is applicable on both goods and services. Right? On And who has the power? Who has got the right here? Who has got the right here? Both center as well as state has both got the rights to collect taxes on both goods and services. This was not there in the constitution, in the constitution earlier. So they had to make this constitutional amendment. Right? This we have already discussed. Now, 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 now listen, everyone here. Let's go to the next one. That is article number 246A. Okay, article number. 246A. What are they trying to tell us here in article number 246A? Okay. Now, Parliament, Center and Legislature of every state, state have the powers for GST. So, remember I told you for union list, both of them will come into picture. Okay. Now, in case of interstate, Interstate means one state to another state. Only parliament can make the laws. So, can we say this goes under union list? IGST. Whenever IGST is applicable, for that laws will be made only by the parliament. Okay. When intra is applicable, when intra is applicable, that is PGST as well as SGST, then both of them, then both of them will have the rights to make the laws. Okay. See here it is. This article grants power to the center and state to make laws with respect to GST imposed by center or such state. So whenever it is intra, then both, 
both uh, central government as well as state government has got the powers to make the laws. Okay, but whenever it comes to this point is actually repeated whenever it comes to interstate who has got the powers only parliament okay only central government has got the powers to make the laws that is told that is told in article number 246a so i can just write it in this way article number 246a whenever it is interstate then exclusive power is available with the parliament right but whenever it is uh, for all the other gst matters i can write it as other gst matters both parliament as well as the state legislature okay both of them have got the rights to make the laws yes then i am proceeding ahead everyone yes since these are very basic things i am going at a speed okay then next one article number 269a everyone here article number 269a this talks about levy on interstate supply interstate one state to another state it talks about that okay just try to understand just try to understand uh, first point whenever inter you give me the answers okay whenever interstate sale happens whenever interstate sale happens which tax is levied igst is levied igst is collected by whom it is collected it is levied and collected by the central government later what happens later this is shared between whom central government and the state government okay this is one such point that they have told you okay another one another one. okay whenever 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 any particular sgst is collected okay whenever any particular tax in the name of sgst is collected okay that will can that be used for payment of igst can that be used for payment of igst answer is yes we discussed now sgst collected can be used to pay igst liability so can we say it gets transferred from one place to another that seamless flow of credit if I am using some SGST for payment of IGST liability means it will get reduced from my SGST and it will increase in my IGST. Okay. Generally what happens is whatever tax is paid that goes to an account called as consolidated fund of the, uh, if, uh, if it is SGST then it goes to consolidated fund of state. Okay. But this will not go to consolidated fund of state because later we are going to use it for IGST liability. Okay. Similarly, IGST credit, can it be used for payment of SGST liability? IGST credit, can it be used for payment of SGST liability? Answer is yes. Okay. So, this IGST credit, this will also not go to consolidated fund of India because it will be transferred to SGST are you clear with this? Generally what happens is whenever any such taxes are collected, whenever any state tax is collected, it goes to consolidated fund of state. Whenever any central tax is collected, it goes to consolidated fund of India. But since these can be used interchangeably, it will not be uh, transferred to consolidated. These things are told in article number 269A. Yes. Okay, then after that, a very small point that is coming up here, other significant provisions of the Constitution Act that was passed, principles for determining place of supply, like where the goods have been sold, is it important, is place of supply important, where the goods have been finally consumed or where the goods have been sold, is it important, yes, because the revenue will accrue to that state government, so uh, where the place has been, supply has been done, when a supply has been done, date, month, etc. For that, we will refer the uh, law which has been formulated by the parliament. Are you clear with this? For interstate, for interstate, only parliament has got the right. So, we will refer to the law frame by the parliament. Then, next one, article number 279A. Okay, this is a little important. Everyone here. 
आर्टिकल नंबर टू सेवेंटी नाइन ए विच टॉक्स अबाउट जी एस टी काउंसिल ओके विच टॉक्स अबाउट जी एस टी काउंसिल नो जी एस टी काउंसिल इज काइंड ऑफ अ ग्रुप इज काइंड ऑफ अ टीम विच इज गोइंग टू विच इज गोइंग टू गिव रेकमेंडेशन टू द पार्लियामेंट एंड टू द स्टेट दैट हाउ जी एस टी शुड बी इम्प्लीमेंटेड हाउ थिंग शुड बी देर एक्सेट्रा वी जस्ट नाउ सो ना दैट दिस जी एस टी लॉज इन केस ऑफ इंटर स्टेट लेट्स इन केस ऑफ इंटर स्टेट सेल एवरीथिंग विल बी डिसाइडेड बाय द पार्लियामेंट सो दिस जी एस टी काउंसिल विल गिव रेकमेंडेशन टू द पार्लियामेंट ओके नॉर्मल जी एस टी अदर मैटर्स विल बी डिसाइडेड बाय द पार्लियामेंट एंड बाय द स्टेट सो दिस जी एस टी काउंसिल दिस जी एस टी काउंसिल कैन गिव दम सम रेकमेंडेशन दैट वी शुड डू दिस वी शुड डू दैट वी शुड डू द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन इन दिस वे एंड सो Yes. Okay. Now everyone here, just try to understand. Now here they are telling that who all, okay, who all will sit in the GST council. Just try to understand a little important. Who all will sit in the GST council? Chairperson, okay, finance minister, union finance minister, okay. Oh, at present, at present it is Nirmala Sita Raman ji. A uh, union finance minister will be the chairperson of this GST council. okay then after that who will be the members okay this person is going to be the chairman or chairperson we can say okay who will be the members of this gst council so union minister of state you you union minister of state who is in charge who is in charge of revenue or finance okay such a person will be designated union minister of state who is in charge of revenue or finance that person will be the member okay then min, who else will be the members so minister in charge okay whoever is a designated minister in charge of finance or taxation or any other minister who is nominated by the state governments those will be the members okay so who will be the chairperson finance minister will be the chairperson of this gst council then union minister of state and minister in charge of finance or taxation of respective states who have whoever has been uh, nominated to become a member of gst council those people these many people will be sitting in the gst council Ma'am, what is the work of this GST council? Work of this GST council is to make recommendations. Okay, its work is to make a recommendation. Recommendation to whom? Recommendation to two of them. Either recommendation to the parliament or recommendation to the state legislature. For what? That. For what? First of all, which taxes must be subsumed? which taxes must be eradicated and must be mixed in gst okay then how to frame the gst law okay model laws model means sample laws will be recommended by the gst council wordings of the act wordings of the gst act okay exemption should be given for which all products which all goods and services remember we had studied about exemptions also okay then threshold threshold limit for registration that below this turnover they should not be they should not be liable for compulsory registration and all so they can recommend the what what limit should be kept okay what should be the rates of gst okay including special rates sometimes it so happens that on luxury products 28% gst is levied so if we want to bring some goods in luxury products and so on okay then 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 next one next one everyone here then some special category states have been notified okay there is a list for that some special category states like northeastern states okay example uh, 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 arunachal pradesh assam meghalaya mizoram nagaland sikkim tripura uh, northern himachal pradesh uttarakhand 
जम्मू एंड कश्मीर एक्सेट्रा दीज सम स्टेट सम स्टेट हैव बिन गिवन द कैटेगरी ऑफ स्पेशल कैटेगरी स्टेट बिकॉज बिकॉज वी वॉन्ट टू ब्रिंग अप दीज स्टेट नाउ ओके सो सम बेनिफिट विल बी गिवन टू देम अंडर जी एस टी ओके सो सम स्पेशल प्रोविजन विल बी मेड फॉर दी स्पेशल कैटेगरी स्टेट आई जस्ट शो यू द लिस्ट ऑफ दीज स्टेट एवरी वन यूर विथ मी ओके यूर इट इज स्पेशल प्रोविजन कैन यू सी दिस आई हैव हाईलाइटेड दिस अरुणाचल प्रदेश आसाम जम्मू एंड कश्मीर मणिपुर मेघालय मिजोराम नागालैंड सिक्किम त्रिपुरा हिमाचल प्रदेश एंड उत्तराखंड ओके दे विल बी नोटि दे विल बी कैटेगराइज एज वॉट दे विल बी कैटेगराइज एज स्पेशल कैटेगरी स्टेट्स एंड फॉर देम वी विल मेक सम स्पेशल प्रोविजन फॉर दीज मैटर्स फॉर दीज मैटर्स रेकमेंडेशन कैन बी गिवन बाय द जी एस टी काउंसिल आई यू वेरी वेरी क्लियर विद दिस येस आई यू क्लियर विद दिस Can we go ahead, everyone? Okay, one more thing which I would like to clarify here, Finance Minister, we already know. Okay, when we talk about GST Council, Union Minister of State who is in charge of revenue or finance okay this is not of every particular state okay uh, persons have been notified as union minister of state okay uh, i think uh, if i am not wrong as far as i remember uh, there was a person called as uh, pankaj choudhry ji okay shri pankaj choudhry ji and shri bhagwat uh, karad ji these people were notified as union minister of state who were handling the ministry of finance okay who were handling this one who were handling the ministry of finance so these people are below the rank of finance minister obviously okay and uh, those people whoever is notified one person or two person or three person whoever is notified those people will be forming part of gst council okay example like finance minister takes part in cabinet meetings also but this person does not take part in cabinet meetings so they are lower in rank chalo can we proceed ahead everyone okay and yes this person these people these people will be of respective states minister in charge of finance or taxation nominated by state government this will be of, of respective states okay now see what are they trying to tell us here uh, you remember for diesel petrol etc we had said that gst will be applicable on those products from a notified date that date that date recommendation can also be given by the gst council means gst council for example it can say that from 1st april 2024 example uh, from 1st april 2024 gst be applicable on it so gst council can recommend and then it depends on the parliament whether to accept it or not okay then next one one half half of the total members of the gst council shall constitute the quorum at its meeting as you already know for every valid meeting some minimum number of members should be present so at least 50% of the total number of members should be present in the gst council meeting then only we can say that the meeting has been conducted in a proper manner yes and whatever decision whatever decision is being taken okay whatever decision is being taken in the gst council for that we require some voting na we require some majority voting so that will be taken by a majority of at least 3/4 of the weighted votes 3/4 of the weighted votes of member present and voting in accordance with the following principles namely vote i'll give you example just understand the theory for the timing everyone here a uh, vote of central government shall have a weightage of 1/3 of the total votes cast and votes of all the state governments taken together shall have a weightage of 2/3 of the total votes cast in that particular meet what are they trying to say 
whenever whenever in case of gst council okay whenever in case of gst council any meeting takes place okay any meeting takes place first of all for a valid meeting at least 50% of the members must be present so as to call it as a valid meeting then if we want to take any decision in the gst council meeting then then they say that we should be getting at least 3/4 we should be getting at least 3/4 of the votes means it should be approved by 75% majority but how to check this 3/4 Okay, how to check this three fourth? Everyone just try to understand. Now let's say, let's say, from central government there is only one person present. Okay, and one person attends the meeting and says yes for that particular means he is agreeing to that particular. Matter. Okay, means can I say hundred percent vote of central government we have got? Okay, then. let's say if we have got if we have got participation of uh, let's say 29 states okay just for example i am taking if we have got participation of all the 29 states and out of that out of that 21 states are agreeing to it okay 21 states are agreeing to it means how much percent voting have we got here can we say 21 by 29 21 by 29 this percentage comes to what this percentage comes to 72.41% right 72.41 percentage of state governments have told yes and 100% of central government has told yes okay now how do we check whether we have got 3/4 majority or not okay now central government 100% state government 72.41% okay we studied in theory that one third weightage is to be given to central government and two third weightage is to be given to state governments okay now central government 100% into one third is going to give me 33.33% right and state government 72.41% multiplied by 2 by 3 this gives me around 48.28% approximately okay approximately so this total comes to how much this total comes to 81.28% approximately okay or i'll take exact only 48 0.28 okay 81.61 percent if i take exact okay this is the weighted average votes of central government as well as state government i wanted a majority of how much i wanted a majority of at least 3/4 3/4 four. stands for 75 percent i have got more than 75 percent means whatever decision was taken in that particular meeting that will be ratified means that will be told yes are you understanding this everyone yes okay if you want to write down this calculation you can just write it down this is just for your knowledge this is not at all this calculation is not at all relevant from exam point of view but yes what you are supposed to remember is whenever a gst council meeting is conducted okay for holding a valid meeting first of all at least 50% member should be present then only quorum is supposed to be present or quorum is assumed to be present okay and if we want to take any decision in that particular gst council meeting then that should be approved by a majority of more than or equal to 3/4 yes in that in that central government will cast its vote central government is only one person there are many state governments okay so central government weight will vote will be given a weightage of 1/3 state government are many people So all of them votes taken together will be given a weightage of two third, and this is how we calculate. Yes, okay, and yes, one more thing that I will take together itself that is Article number three sixty eight, which is linked to the above, so that you don't get confused. Okay, in the above Article number two seventy nine A, we studied about quorum of the GST Council, and we studied about voting. Okay, we studied about voting. that how it is supposed to be done 
Now here we are studying uh, this article number 368. This was, this has been amended to include article 279A also within its purview. So what are they trying to tell us here? At least two third of the majority in each house of parliament, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha and ratification by at least half of the state is required to make any amendment in the article 279A relating to GST council. Okay, now listen, this whatever we studied 3, 4th etc. that was for any decision taken by GST council. Okay, if we want to make any changes in this 3, 4th, 1, 3rd, 2, 3rd, quorum 50% etc. If we want to do any changes, sorry, one second, I'll add one more page. Yes, if we want to do if we want to do any changes in the above article, that is in the article relating to GST council, okay, then in such a case, then in such a case that will be, that has to be first approved by the parliament, okay. So, we should get at least two-third voting in parliament, both houses, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. Then we will take the ratification from the states will, where at least 50% of the states, okay, where at least 50% of the states should be saying, Yes, then, then what? Then what? Then you can do changes in the GST council. Okay, if you want to do any amendment, if you want to do any changes in the GST council, then it can be done. Are you clear till here? Yes, and last one that is that constitution amendment was done. So a bill was proposed and then it was converted into an act. So, some important provisions from that has been highlighted here. Majority, we, all we have done, just a few things have been summarized here and put together. So, here they are telling that yes, for GST, concurrent powers are there. Remember, it was forming part of list 3. Yes, GST, concurrent, because both of them have got the powers. But when it comes to interstate, when it comes to IGST, who has got the powers? Only parliament, only central government has got the Parliament and whatever IGST has been collected, that will be shared between whom? That will be shared between the centre and the state. Okay. For interstate, only Parliament has got the powers. Achha, GST will be applicable on which products? All the goods and services except alcoholic liquor for human consumption. Yes. And what about petrol, diesel, etc. from the date which will be notified in the future. Okay. What about tobacco? For tobacco, GST is also applicable and plus excise duty is also applicable. What about drugs? GST is also applicable plus excise duty is also applicable. Are you clear with this? Achha, GST council, who will be the chairperson? Union finance minister will be the chairperson. Who will be the members? Who will be the members? We had studied now. Union minister of state and the minister nominated by each states. Okay. What is the work of GST Council? Work of GST Council is to make recommendation to the parliament for goods which will come under GST, the rates of taxes applicable, registration process and so on. Okay. Then, then after that, the next one. See this. Achha. We know that GST became effective from 1st July 2017 and Jammu Kashmir from 8th July 2017. What about GST Council? GST Council came into force. GST, uh, the provisions relating to that came into force on 12th September 2016 and the president constituted, it was formed, we, the thought of it or the, you know, draft of it was ready on 12th of September, but it was finally constituted with all the members etc. on 15th September 2016, okay. Earlier, some goods were called as declared goods for special importance, everything has been removed from GST. Some goods were given special importance that has been removed from here. Okay, here only special category states have been notified. No goods have been specifically notified. Are you clear with this? Yes. So these are some important. One more point: transitional provisions. Whenever we are moving from one law to another, during that time there can be some hardships. There can be some problems. Yes. So, they have kept some provisions to take care of any inconsistency. Like when we move from VAT or service tax to GST, there can be some uh, help that will be required by the taxpayers. So, government is ready to provide that. 
okay so till the time so at least for a period of one year from when the gst started for one year government is going to provide you that necessary help and after one year government says that now you have to learn entire gst are you clear till here everyone yes so this was all about this was all about your basic concepts basic things under gst okay we have not even learned any concepts just few terms few governments few authorities only those things we have done here i hope you have understood whatever we have studied yes please read once you are done with this please read it from the textbook one so that you have a very good hold of it once you are done with that reading then go to the question answers and then try the question answers on your own are you clear with this and yes once you are done with this chapter shoot up your doubts okay and let me know let me know that yes ma'am we have done the chapter number 1 and we have understood yes